was fairly young, and I know we went to Stowe, Vermont, and we were there for a long time. But what do you remember about the interview and then going there with me on The Trouble with Harry with Alfred Hitchcock? Well, the interview was interesting because you really didn't have a big interview with a lot of other kids. Maybe that's why I don't remember it. That's, that's <laughs> probably why you remember part of it. Yeah. Uh, what happened was, actually, it was all a string of coincidences. Uh, there was a little boy that got sick, and he was doing, it was a live show. It was called Lux Video. And it used to be on the radio. It was a very popular show. They would take a, a movie and then condense it and then do it in a, in a half hour or an hour on radio. And then they, they put it into uh, TV, on TV. And they did it at uh, NBC in Burbank. So, uh, but, so Jerry, uh, a little boy got sick who already had the part and he couldn't do it. So at the last minute, they, they were supposed to have to have uh, brown eyes and Jerry's got light eyes. So they did not, uh, he, he didn't get the interview, but they didn't care what color the kid's eyes were. They just had a few days left and they had to get, find a replacement for the little boy who got sick. So uh, they went, with their, I think there was just two little kids and the interview was, he said, can you salute the flag? And Jerry was in kindergarten and he knew how to salute the flag. And the other little boy, I guess he could do it, but Jerry did it better, he got the part. And so it was on live TV and it was, uh, it was called To Each His Own. It was a movie that Olivia de Havilland had done. It was very popular at the time. So, and Jerry played Olivia de Havilland's son and he was only in the very first things. And this was a very ambitious production because they had always done Lux Video in a half hour. And they, this was going to be the first hour-long Lux Video. And so they didn't have much stage room. And, and they, so they had to use every single bit, bit on that stage. Everything was a set. There was hardly any room, just, just like a few feet around the outside edges. And Jerry was in the very first scene. And, uh, and he, he said his lines and and get, uh, came out, and then we had to sit there till they finished that, the scene, uh, which would be probably another 15 minutes or so. And so we were sit sitting by the sta stage in this little, like maybe a, like, like a foot and a half or a foot even. No, it would be about a foot and a half at least. We, we were sitting there waiting to finish that, and then Jerry decided he was thirsty. And that he, and he saw a, a water fountain over at the other side of the stage. And he decided he just had to have a drink of water. And he started over there, and I was so afraid he was going to fall or trip or something and fall right into the one of the sets with, that they were film, shooting on. And so there was a man sitting up in the what we used to call the sponsor's booth. They had them in radio. I, they don't even have them nowadays. They're glass, and they sat up above. And the, the people, the sponsors used to sit there and look down. Well, there was one man sitting up there. And so he started watching Jerry. And... It, and then, so Jerry put on a good show for him because he was acting so interested like this and watching what Jerry was doing. And I was going like this, come back. And then, <laughs> probably like that. I was so mad at him and he wouldn't come back. And he put on a big show about, and he went over there and got a drink and got back and he didn't fall through, thank goodness. So then at the end of the show, we ran home because, it, because the show went live all over the United States except in LA. LA, it was shown, I think, two or three hours, probably three hours later or two hours. And so you could run home and then you could watch your show. So I ran home and I watched, uh, we turned on the show and I watched it. And at the end they had Alfred Hitchcock on. And he was in, he would, they always had somebody like that on who would be advertising a movie that they were doing. He was advertising maybe Rear Window, I don't know, one of his movies at the end. And I said, oh my gosh, that's Alfred Hitchcock that was in that, up in that booth. And See, nobody knew in those days what Alfred Hitchcock looked like. We knew his name because he was a famous director, but we didn't know what he looked like. So I, I didn't think any more of it. And a couple of days later, somebody came to the door, a delivery man. He knocked, and there, there was a script there. It said, please have your son learn these lines. He'll be called for an interview in a few days. So I taught Jerry the lines, and a few days later, actually it was on a Saturday, and he was at a birthday party in a movie, when they called and said they wanted to see him, it was a Paramount studio. And, and uh, so my husband took him up to the studio and he had to go get him out of the movie and then he took him up to the thing and the, after he, Jerry hadn't had lunch yet because it was a movie and then a lunch for the birthday party. So he went up there and he, uh, he, and he complained because he said, 
he saw that this man was there with a with silver, a great big silver plate they brought in for him. And he was eating, and he said, I was so hungry. <laughs> and you, that was Alfred Hitchcock, by the way. Yes, do you the remember? Man. Yes, <laughs> do you, who was a gourmet. Yes, do you remember? He said, I was so hungry. And he said, Anyway, so we went home and he got he got the part. And so there was no other mothers had said, "Oh, my boy was supposed to get or was interviewed or something." They weren't. Nobody was in. They were going to get a boy from New York, a New York actor, but they never got to New York because they he had seen Jerry and he, he got. That's how you got the part. That's you never got the really part. went that that interview. And then from then we went to Vermont, and we were there for about three weeks. Oh, it's not, it was I think well, six. I think we ended up four weeks. We weren't yeah. supposed to be that long, but they kept waiting for the leaves to turn, and the leaves didn't turn. The people in the in the little towns kept saying, "Wait, wait! As soon as the first frost comes, the leaves will turn and they'll be so pretty." And so, guess what happened? A frost came and then a big wind and it blew all the leaves down. So the ground was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but it flew all the leaves stuff, so they had to end up doing a lot of that filming back on the stages. And, and well, they also had men all the all run, the grips, run around, yes. and they would you remember they that they would staple the leaves back on the trees <laughs> yes. in Vermont, so that it looked like it had because otherwise the trees were bare. Yes, it was fair. But Alfred Hitchcock was really really nice to Jerry all the time. They just Very had nice a bond, man. and uh, Edwin Gwynn liked them a lot too. He'd always want to talk to him. And Edwin Gwynn did, I mean, Alfred Hitchcock did the nicest things. One time he, they had, they were filming kind of later in the day, and they had these big cans that, uh, barrels like with fire in them. And, and Jerry said, oh, we should have a wiener roast or something. And so <laughs> Alfred, or marshmallows, I guess it was. And so Alfred Hitchcock sent somebody out to get wieners and marshmallows. <laughs> so and he was Jerry, a gourmet, so they were the very best wieners and marshmallows. <laughs> So Jerry, so Jerry and and the crew got it on it too. They took uh, sticks and they took them off, and and they had marshmallow and wiener roast. And he he just was always nice to Jerry. He really was. There was never any problem with them. And one time, they said uh, like kind of at night, like about four four thirty or something at night, a, a script change came to me. And I looked at it, and I read it through once, and I think I read it to Jerry once, and it was a very complicated script. And uh, they, and so I thought they wouldn't be filming it for a few days. And then we go the next day in, and they started filming it. And that was uh, the one about, uh, today is yesterday, was it? It was, oh, yeah, it was really big, complicated. A big mix up. And I had never really taught it to him. I think I read it to him once. And so they got Jerry up there. They, and I thought, oh, I didn't know what's going to happen because I knew he didn't know the lines. And and uh, it, it worked out really good. And, and uh, John Forsyth was so sweet and nice to Jerry, you know. And and we they got through the set. They got through it. And then Albert Hitchcock said, Mother, please have the mother come up there. So I had to come up there and sit there and tell him. I said, it's easy, Jerry. You he, He'll say this, and you just say this. And you have to say, oh, but that was the day after yesterday, which was the day before tomorrow, something like that, right? Very mixed up. There it was, wasn't anything that made any sense. <laughs> yes, it didn't make any sense. It was really... And so Jerry got through the one. And another, another funny thing that happened is there was a frog. Some way he had a frog, and he put the frog, and the frog started hopping, and then Jerry hopped after the frog. <laughs> I don't think they left it in the movie, but the whole crew just burst out when they stopped because Jerry was just hopping after the frog trying to catch it. <laughs> I remember that. We had a good time up there, too, because the food was so good. Because yeah. we weren't at the studio, so the ladies, I remember Hitchcock was right. a gourmet. And so the ladies would all wonder, would he pick his food? Because we'd go to like commissary type thing where you'd go by. Yeah. And uh, the food was from the local people. And the local ladies. And it was always, if you could just see them light up if he took their food. Especially the blueberry muffins. Oh, the blueberry muffins in the morning were the best. <laughs> they were the greatest. <laughs> I think he, didn't that for Hitchcock even put a seed in there with blueberry muffins? I think he did, as a matter yeah, of fact. Yeah, where you go yeah. up and you're talking, to, you had that rabbit, the dead yeah. rabbit that you carried around. And, uh, and they, you know, it was I a good, that, that was a good movie. I had, yeah. We had a good time there. I know what he did. And, the and big thing was they were worried that it was going to snow. That was it. <laughs> yeah. We had to get as much in as we could every day because the snows were coming. But the leaves had to turn. But the leaves had to turn, and the leaves weren't turning, but the snow might be coming. 
So they ended up going onto the stage at Hollywood and they had to order all kinds of some kind of leaves from Germany. Cost them a lot of money more than they expected. And then they they filmed some of the scenes on back here on the stage. And when we were there, there was two great big enormous stages of Paramount together. And they were filming at one end of the stage and Jerry's little schoolroom was set up at the far, far end of the other uh, stage. So it was like almost a, a long way away. It would be almost a block away, right? Yeah. To the, and every single morning we'd get there and Alfred Hitchcock would come walking over the whole two stages and he'd say, good morning, Mr. Mathers, in his Alfred Hitchcock. And he was Hitchcock. the first person that ever called me Mr. Mathers because that was my father. <laughs> I'd look around, my father's not here. No, he must be talking to me. Anyway, he'd say, how, how are you, Mr. Mathers? And Jerry said, good, I'm good, or whatever. And then he said, uh, is everything good here? Is everything? Jerry said, yes, everything's fine. And he said, that's good. Goodbye. All right, Mr. Mathers. And he did that every night. And that was just so nice of him because uh, the other directors don't do that. And here it was Hitchcock. And he walked all, he, he, every single time Jerry was on that stage, and it was for about two weeks that he walked that entire length to say, good morning, Mr. Mathers. <laughs> I guess he got a big kick out of Jerry. I don't know why, but he was a nice man. I remember that. Yeah. I remember sitting on his lap. and uh, You do? Yep, sitting on his lap and running lines, and people would just kind of go, he doesn't do that for anybody. 